So uh, what a week it's been in the automotive world. We've got several announcements this week. Um, one that I'm particularly more excited about than the other. Um, first things first, the Ferrari uh, new flagship has been announced. It's called the F80. Uh, I thought that was a bit of a strange name because the SF90 just sounds more important in terms of like the phonetics, the sound of it. Um, it's a V6 hybrid. I've been saying this for ages, it's gonna be a V6 hybrid based on uh, their hypercar, their WEC hypercar. It also has um, elements of the 296 engine and their F1 engine. Uh, it's got e-turbo, so they spool up a lot faster. Uh, it costs 3.1 million pounds and they're making 799 of them. Very amazing car, look it up. I could sit here and I could talk about this car, but I, I don't have an attachment to the car. I would love one, but a 3.1 million pounds, that's a lot of money. Uh, Bugatti Chiron is 2.1 new, was 2.1 new. Uh, so I, in my in my brain, it, I struggle to process it. LaFerrari is around that price. I think I would rather have a LaFerrari. And also, I'm not in the position to buy one because I haven't been invited to buy one because you have to be a, a collector of Ferraris. If I was invited, maybe my tone would change a little in terms of buyer's bias, I would say. But uh, it, it, does, it does look pretty cool. It's very, very track focused. Again, I could go on about it, but... I want to focus on another car, another track-focused car. This news came out yesterday. Porsche have announced the new GT3 and GT3 Touring simultaneously. So the 992.2, uh, which is very strange. Usually we get the, the GT cars coming later in a model's life. However, I think Porsche has done this because they announced the hybrid 911 first in terms of the GTS. And they wanted to make sure that the true fans, the true 911 enthusiasts do not feel like Porsche's going the other way. So they thought before any more speculation, let's just drop it and see what everyone says. So it's out, here, the new 992.2 GT3 and GT3 Touring. I'm very excited about this car. You might be like, why are you excited? You have a GT3 RS and that is true. I have a GT3 RS. However, the GT3s I've always thought are more usable and more uh, practical for an on-road experience. For example, GT3 RS I have doesn't have a front boot. The GT3 RS I have has a roll cage in the back. GT3 RS uh, is very hard riding in comparison. So the GT3 being announced excites me. I didn't think I would want one until Porsche said that the GT3 Touring is going to have four seats, which for me, with my wife and my son, that is that, that is the ultimate selling point to me. Like it was just so simple. Basically, imagine a diagram and it says, do you need a 911 GT3? No. Do you need a car with four seats? Yes. Do you need a 911? <laughs> anyway, uh, but before before I, I ramble on about why the Touring is sick and why it has four seats and why I think this is amazing, let me talk to you about the cars so I can just go over them for you because I think they're amazing. Starting with the aerodynamics, uh, the front bump on the G3 uh, is different. It's got new intakes at the front. Uh, there's also carbon fiber, what seems to be carbon fiber there, where we're used to just having plastic before. Um, yeah, enhances the cooling and enhances the aerodynamic efficiency, uh, improving drivability in track conditions. You probably won't really notice it on the road. The rear view diffuser has been completely reworked and uh, redesigned, optimizing airflow for, again, improved track driving, improved efficiency as well in terms of fuel saving but that's not the point of this car it retains the gt3 anyway the signature swan neck was very drastic when it came out people were like wow this is very large for a gt3 but now the gt3 rs is here that spoiler looks absolutely normal which is insane um so yeah it's got the swan neck still it still looks cool the gt3 pretty much looks very similar to it how it did before and the touring does the spoiler has been redefined again for uh, aerodynamic efficiency so yeah it's just i don't know it's like they've kept the design very traditional but that's what porsche is it's about the traditionalist the person that doesn't like to vary too much and change too much because porsche files will be up in arms so now as well big news uh visac package is available on the gt3 with some weight saving elements carbon roof you could get before carbon mirrors anti-roll bars that have been reworked uh lightweight magnesium wheels are now available so they i believe save 1.5 kg in each corner i'm not entirely sure it might be more than that all these tweaks uh decrease the car's overall weight which is amazing and then if you want um the touring there's no Vicec pack, but there is a lightweight pack, but 
I, I can't say it in, ger in the German accent, so I don't want to butcher it, but there's a lightweight impact now that also adds some elements like the carbon reef. So no more, I think, club sports uh, branding there. In terms of engine, uh, the engine uh, principle is the same as it always is in uh, Porsches. So you do get that six cylinder, flat six, not changing. Uh, the good news is it's not hybrid. Thank God that the GT3s haven't gone hybrid. When you hybridize things, it adds weight and the GT3 is about being as light as possible for uh, the Porsche line. So it's pretty much the same engine, 4.0 uh, naturally aspirated flat six, 502 horsepower, 470 newton meters of torque. They've been uh, restricted uh, a lot in terms of regulations, uh, emissions regulations, sound regulations. So I believe the car has six, it was it six catalytic converters, something ridiculous like that. And they had to bump up the power to counteract that uh, that that loss that you get with um, all of the things they've had to add, like filters, particular filters, converters, just to make sure that the 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 um, car meets regulations. They've revised the cylinder heads, reworked camshafts, uh, larger throttle bodies, still revs to nine thousand RPM. The manual gearbox is still available. Yay! If you like manuals, I'll get to my car in a second because I am ordering one. I am getting one, so I'll get to that in a second. I, but I will not be getting a manual gearbox, and I explain why later on. And you can still get again the seven-speed PDK, but the PDK um, has shorter gear ratio, so the final drive is reduced by eight percent which is quite drastic. It has the same final drive as the 911 ST, I believe. So this is gonna make the gear shorter. You're gonna be shifting more, be more enjoyable, and you'll be able to feel that engine working a bit sooner, it'll be a, a bit more present, a bit more excited. The chassis setup, uh, the GT3 features a dual wishbone front suspension taken from uh, the Porsche Motorsport division. So uh, the G GT3 RS uh, suspension and tech has trickled down a bit to um, improve the, the driving uh, capability of the new GT3, uh, they found that when they were trying to make the touring better for on-road driving, so making it a bit slightly softer, a bit easier to drive on a road, they found that what they did for that in terms of tuning the suspension, the chassis and the dampers, uh, when they did all of that, they found it didn't hamper the track performance of the car. So they just carried it over. So expect a more compliant ride on rough roads. The setup offers precise control over wheel motion, improved handling and reduced body roll. They've tweaked the suspension setup and the anti-dive setup. So now when you brake, there's gonna be less pitch. I don't really feel it in my GT3 RS because it's got that big old wing on the back. But it, when I drove a GT3, there was a, a little bit of pitch, but it wasn't noticeable. But for me, this is what makes Porsche Porsche. They really focus on making these cars as good as possible, even if they're already great. So those incremental changes that they might not be perceivable to someone like me or you, but believe me, they work on it. And when Porsche say they've changed something, they actually have, because there's some brands that introduce, oh, this is the new version of this, or this, this, that, this, that, and there's not really any change. It's just a change in the branding that they use. So I really love that about Porsche. When it comes to the chassis and suspension, anti-roll bars, again, damper's been uh, retweaked. The rear wheel steering's been reworked. The rear wheel steering on Porsche is the best that I've ever experienced in the industry. Of all the cars I have with rear wheel steering, the Porsches that anyone wears imperceptible. It's natural, it doesn't feel weird. Whereas when I'm driving, for example, the SF90, it's a bit excitable. When I'm driving the SVJ, less so, but I can still see that it's there. The Urus Performante is probably the worst rear wheel steering experience I've ever had because you turn, the front wheels turn, then the rear wheels turn, it's horrid. Terrible, terrible, terrible system in the Performante. They need to really rework that. And I believe in the later Performantes they did, I got quite an early car. So it kind of sucks and I hate driving it in course mode. To go on, yeah, they've just reworked it. Um, magnesium wheels, again, reducing unsprung mass, giving you quicker steering response. Uh, they've taken the steering rack, I believe, from the ST as well, just to give you, again, better steering capability. Carbon ceramic brakes are still there. Probably some of the breast brakes are very, very breast, breast brakes? The best brakes I've ever experienced. Um, Cup 2 R tires are now available on the GT3 and GT3 Touring which I will not be getting. Cup 2s are great. Cup 2 Rs are amazing. On track, on regular road, terrifying. So I'll probably try and go for like a P0 Corsa. I really like the P0 Corsa and I'm really used to the tie now. Inside, we have a new uh, dash layout. So what we have now is the digital dash that a lot of people hated on. I don't care about it. I like digital dash, it doesn't bother me. It just allows for further customization and uh, tailoring to your needs. I'm here for the digital dash. I know Porsche purists are going to be very against it, but new uh, infotainment system, we'll have the latest version of the infotainment system, system similar to one in the Taycan, so just be a bit snappier, a bit clearer. You do have an analog twist uh, start, 
because the GT cars will have that going forward, I believe, because it's supposed to be so. As soon as you put on your seatbelt, you can get in the car, turn it on and just go. You don't really have to do anything else. The push button takes a bit of that tactile feeling out of it, which I understand. And also, again, I guess it's just being traditional. The interior has had some massive changes. You now get new bucket seats, which are foldable, thank God. And you can get them with heating as well. So that is a massive bonus. Uh, let me just close out and just say the GT3s, I didn't think there was much that they would change and it feels like they have changed what needed to be changed and improved what needed to be improved. Again, I'm quite blown away. I didn't think I was going to be excited for this car, but as soon as they announced the GT3 Touring was going to have four seats, my jaw hit the floor. I was just, I was excited and blown away. I immediately messaged my Porsche dealer and said, look, I'm going to need one. I don't need you to respond, I'm, I just know I'm going to need one. So I'm going to get a GT3 Touring. Hopefully I'll get it from my dealer because I have a GT3 RS. So hopefully um, I'm in that GT system already. I've had a turbo GT as well. So I, I want to get that GT3 Touring and make it my, my family uh, supercar when I want to do like supercar things. I want to take my son or I just want to drive in something other than like a four door um, Urus or i7 or G-Wagon. So it's going to be really, really nice to be able to share that experience with my wife and my son because I haven't been able to I, I not share with both of them at the same time because Urus is a fast car. It's not really a sports car. M3 Touring, M8 that I had, all those cars, they're not really, they're not, they're not sports cars in the purest sense of the word. And I think the GT3 is going to allow me to bring that experience to my family. So I'm, like I'm excited for it. I, I would spec one up. Porsche's configurator isn't working at the moment uh, for these cars. Not working. It's not available yet. So I think what they're trying to do is stop people from specking one up, sending to a dealer, and then the dealer's being like, "Oh, this person gets it. This person gets it." They're trying to just let the hype build, let it mellow out, and then if you know, you know, or you 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 get one if you're going to get one without having to cause too much of a hype and letting that hype die down. This way, I think they can kind of extend it as well i'm gonna go for purple on mine silver wheels and i'm gonna go for the bucket seats four seats that's the only way you can get the four seats with the foldable buckets i want a tan interior i haven't had a tan interior ever so i want a tan leather interior so hopefully i'll be able to speak to porsche to get that done now probably be special requests i think they call it Sonderfash? I can't remember. Sorry, my German is horrendous. I did German lessons in school. I forgot everything. Great news for me. GT3 RS is still a ways away. I've got my GT3 RS. If they announce that next month, I'd be a bit concerned. But it's still a way away. They said they're still coming up with stuff for the GT3 RS and they're still thinking of what to add to it, which is nice for me. Yeah, it just makes this GT3 again a bit more special. I'm looking forward to when the turbo is announced. That would be very interesting because we haven't got the turbo yet. Usually uh, we'd have a hint of that coming. Uh, it's probably going to be turbo E hybrid. And I had a really weird thought. Wouldn't it be crazy if Porsche did a 911 turbo GT and they took some of those GT elements and put it into the turbo, similar to like what they've done with the Cayenne turbo GT or the uh, Taycan turbo GT. I think that'd be pretty cool. And I don't see them not doing that. I feel like they were testing the waters with the Cayenne and they put it in the Taycan and then maybe a Panamera and then they're gonna be like oh 911 turbo GT for everyone that wants a GT car but hasn't been invited this is for you sorry this isn't a regular video today but I, I tried my best but this news was just too overwhelming the Ferrari F80 again amazing car I could go into a whole in-depth thing about the F80 about the technology but to me this car the GT3 Touring relates more to me and relates more to my bank account and it's unfortunate but I feel like cars like the W1 the McLaren that I haven't even spoken to you guys about and the F80, they, we now live in an era where a thousand horsepower cars are like readily available from uh, dealerships. So now these cars with their stats and all the aero and everything, it's like the buzz isn't as great as it would have been five, six years ago, which is a shame. But that's why I believe a lot of these cars now are being designed as track weapons instead of like suit the regular supercar. So where before the LaFerrari was like V12, uh, emotion and it still looks like this now it's like the engineers were like listen regular cars are fast now so we need to power something that's ridiculously fast so now the cars are no longer designed by the designers and kind of designed by the engineers if that makes sense in order to make them fast that's why they all look like race cars now like actual wec race cars so yeah um thank you for locking in uh, aside from that my 918 my uh, if everyone that stayed to the end my 918, oh my gosh, I've had some wicked progress. So I've, I've got a car now that's 
I've got I've got one. I've got one. The only thing oh God, can I reveal? Can I reveal? I can I reveal I, I need to I found the car. I found the car and I'm happy with the car. Uh, like two or three things need to be done. I don't wanna I don't, I don't can I ruin it? Basically, the people that have this 918, they want a car that I own in exchange for the 918. I'll leave it at that. Anyway, I love you guys. Thanks for tuning in. Um, I really appreciate it. I want to start a podcast so I can have more of these conversations. And I need to start doing more like TikTok live stuff like I used to. But I really appreciate every single one of you that locks in. My editor, Joe, amazing job. He just takes that stress off of my shoulders. I'm looking for a filming team, a filming squad. Uh, I'm looking for like basically a one one as a producer, maybe like a script writer, a couple camera guys. I want to really step this up for you guys because I enjoy making these videos and I hopefully you guys enjoy watching them. So yeah, uh, look out for details how to apply if you think you can do that or if you have experience. But honestly, you guys are amazing. I love you. Remember, positive thoughts breed positive things. Try and stay as positive as always. And um, yeah, I'll, if you need guys need any help or if you need any advice or anything, I'm always here. I try to answer as many DMs as possible. Hit me up. But peace. Have a wonderful, uh, wonderful morning, afternoon or evening.